Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Baron, and this is your Brain on Books. And today we're talking about the Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins, an absolutely bizarre piece of genre blending speculative fiction that I don't know if you could quite call dark fantasy or horror or magical realism. It's kind of all of those things at once. And it was a really fun and quirky book, and I'm happy I read it. Now, this book was recommended to me by someone who I think has a good grasp on my reading taste, and they know I like the weird, I like the bizarre, and they were absolutely right. So I want to thank them for the recommendation. This was a good pick for me. Now, this is Hawkins' debut novel, and I think it's an impressive debut, but I did have some issues with the writing style, which we'll touch on later that left me originally kind of conflicted about how I felt about the book, but now that I've had a little bit of time away and I was able to think about it overall, I like this a lot and I would recommend it and it's worth your time. So before we get into the good and the bad and all that good stuff, let's just touch on what this book is about. Now, this follows a motley crew of individuals who, when they were children, were adopted into a place known only as the library by a man known only as father. So, at some point, for reasons that are unclear, they have been removed from their home, the library, and father is missing. So the story and the plot are really a mystery of trying to piece together what this place is, who is father, why is he important, and what they need to do to return home. And it was fun. It was fast-paced. It was an edge-of-your-seat book that was entirely unpredictable for a lot of reasons, which we'll get into in a second. And overall, I just enjoyed it. So I'm going to touch on the library briefly without giving too many spoilers. This is information you learn very early on in the book is the library itself has unlimited knowledge, but not just unlimited knowledge as we perceive it, but also stuff that's been lost from the world. And since our main characters had exposure to this stuff when they were children and growing up, they all were able to become specialists in things that we no longer see in the world. Now, it feels magical, but they make a very strong point to state that this is not magic. And some of these things would be like being able to communicate with animals and advanced hand-to-hand -hand combat and learning all languages. Just some really out there stuff that I don't see in speculative fiction, which kind of added again to that unpredictable nature of the story. I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. Now, Let's get into what I liked and did not like about the book. Now, the first thing I thought was very well done was the found family trope in this story. And that is something we see in fantasy a lot. But the approach here from Hawkins was quirky and very different. You know, typically found families, we see a lot of compassion and trust and love amongst our characters. In this story, it's the complete opposite. We have a lot of manipulation and they're rude to each other and they don't trust one another. And it's just kind of, once again, adds to this bizarre, unpredictable nature of the story. The next thing I thought was very well executed was the pacing. I mentioned before, this is a fast paced novel and it reads more like a crime thriller than it does an actual piece of speculative fiction, which was really, really cool. I wish I'd see more authors take that approach. Usually when we have, you know, fantasy or magical realism stories that are really fast paced, it all relies on combat or battles or, you know, kind of that stuff. And this isn't that at all. It's, it's fast paced mystery thriller that I associate with other areas of genre fiction. And one thing that was neat is you have this kind of crime thriller part, and then you have this really quirky, magical realism part, which just added once again to this unpredictable nature, because you have this kind of push and pull between two genres that we're used to seeing how they resolve in the end of the story. And you're not able to do that with this at all. So very well executed. Like I said, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time I read this and I read it very, very fast. So let's get into what I didn't care for. And I mentioned this before and that was the writing style itself. Now, Hawkins does something that kind of drives me crazy within modern horror fiction is where the author does not establish atmosphere. I think atmosphere is very, very important for dark books. He doesn't do that, and a lot of other modern horror authors rely on that ick factor to where we're just going to inject little parts of, 
you know, kind of the grotesque or here's some excessive swearing or here's some drug use. And we're going to have that do the heavy lifting to get that kind of genre sticker slapped on the front of our book. It's something that bothers me, might not bother you, but I'm kind of just tired of authors relying on it. Now, this book has been compared to the works of Neil Gaiman. Now, Neil Gaiman, I think, doesn't do that at all. I think Gaiman is very good at establishing atmosphere and then has this offset with these whimsical components that kind of make it a, a very balanced reading experience overall. So there's an offset here too by Hawkins to where there's a ton of levity. Now this is one of the parts where I was kind of conflicted on. Now he really put some quirky stuff in here because our characters living in solitude in this library don't have a lot of exposure to the things that we consider normal in our world. I mean, I'm talking about the way they handle food and fashion and everything else. Like one of our main characters, for example, is this kind of brute goon and he's walking around in a tutu and he's complaining about that he's got blood in his tutu. Kind of just weird stuff. So I wasn't sure if that absurdist levity was kind of the appropriate offset to these kind of over the top kind of grotesque things that Hawkins puts into the novel. And I think I enjoyed it. I think if that was missing from the story, this book would have been a disaster. So the levity was pretty cool overall. Now, like I said, I was conflicted at first, but in the end, I think this was a worthwhile read. I'm very happy I picked it up. And despite those issues, if Hawken writes anything in the future, I'm going to read it. 100%. I think this is an author that has a lot of promise. He's doing some things that are absolutely different within all these subgenres that he's kind of combining together. And I just, I wish I would see more of that. I want to see more books like The Library at Mount Char that just feel so different and refreshing from the, kind of the same tropes and storytelling structures that we see over and over again. So if you've picked up this book, let me know what you think. If not, I highly encourage you to do so. And until next time, see ya.